I'm going to tie a rubber leg Kaufman stone, and I'm starting off with a size 10 uh, hopper hook in the vise, or you can use a curved nymph, and I've got an eighth of an inch uh, tungsten bead in black. I'm going to slide that down to start to attach my thread, and the thread that I'll use is a 70 black, and this is a nice flat thread so that I can attach some materials underneath that uh, underneath that bead. So I'll take enough wraps to get it in, remove that tag, and then leave my thread just behind the eye. I'll tie in the antenna, and for that I'm going to use a uh, black goose biot. So I'll take two off. I'll put them back to back to work with that natural V, or you can tie these in one at a time on either side of the hook shank, but the hook shank is going to provide that uh, separation between these two. So I like to angle them up slightly and attach them from there. I'll twist them just slightly so that they face me and then take my wraps. And Once I've gotten maybe two wraps in or so I can uh, adjust the stems of these so that they stay separated. So once I've got them about how I want them to look I'm taking some wraps away from the eye, and that's so I don't create too much bulk in any one uh, area. I want the uh, bead to be able to slide over it and not pinch these together. So now I can whip finish. Pull down and remove. And now if I've done this right, I can push this this bead head up and it's not going to close uh, the antenna that I that I tied in. So that looks pretty good. Now I can add in my lead. So I'll take a couple of wraps, maybe six to eight wraps here and remove and just clean up the the ends. Before I slide this uh, up to seat the bead, I am going to take a drop of you can use Zappa Gap or, in this case, um, Crazy Glue or Super Glue. And then I'll push that up to seat the bead. And then that will lock everything in place. So the antenna, the bead, uh, and the, the lead will all be locked into place now. I can reattach my Black 70. And now I don't need to worry about taking wraps through the, through the lead because it's already in place. If you want to take a couple more, you're certainly not doing any harm. So now for the tail, <clears throat> again I'll use Goose Biop, but I want to put some dubbing in between so that again they really stay apart. So I'm going to use a black dubbing and I'll take a little pinch and create a tag there at the back again to keep those biots separated. <clears throat> Come back and get two more and repeat the process. Hold them by the, the tip, angle them towards me slightly and then take a look and then hold them in place and I can wrap all of that in and come back and really tighten it down. Now I can remove those ends. The rib for this I'm going to use a uh, small black uh, vinyl rib and I'm going to use it uh, in black although you can use a, a gray or something like that to give you some more contrast. I'll tie this in behind the lead and wrap it all the way down to my tail. I can come back to my dubbing and I want to build out this taper
And one more pinch should get me what I'm looking for. It goes a lot quicker when you don't have a camera in front of you. And I'll finish dubbing that out. And now I can wrap my rib through. And I always like to end a section with a wrap of rib. And then I can trim that. And now to cover up that end of the rib and keep the taper going, I'll put one small pinch in on top. Now I can start tying in my uh, back and for that I'm going to use a thin skin just a straight black. I'm going to cut a strip that is maybe a quarter inch or so in width and so I've got my strip of thin skin here and I'll cut in a V to the back. You can use a mottled turkey for this as well, which I think is probably more more common, but I just like the the look and how this thin skin holds up. So I'll place this on top and tie it in. And then I'll trim and I'll use that thin skin again for the next wrap. Now I'll take another pinch of dubbing and continue the taper. And another section of the thin skin and I'll have it just cover up the segment of dubbing before it take a couple wraps to tie it down and then remove it and now I can tie in my my rubber legs before I take the next patch of dubbing. So I'm going to use a fine round rubber leg in black. I'll double it over the thread and attach it. Trim and repeat the process on the other side. And trim and now I can come back to my dubbing and dub between the legs. And I'll pull these back. Take my wraps in front. And now I can add in, and I'm going to put an alligator clip on the, on the legs, or you can use a wire if you have it handy to hold these legs back. And that's just to keep them out of the way. So I'll clip those on and now I can add my final piece of thin skin. Cut my V.
place it on top and cover up that section before it. Try to get it centered here. And remove the thin skin. Add in one final pinch of dubbing. whip finish behind the head now I can remove the alligator clip and adjust these legs as needed make a cut to length I usually leave these pretty long so I'll make a trim and then finally I like to pick out the thorax a bit And that is a rubber leg Kaufman stone.